From Cornwall to Birmingham and Johnston and Bexhill, here's Ruben Spire on the radio. Hello to Sunny Surveyor. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for letting me uh, chat to you today. So, can you tell how long have you been a single songwriter for? So, I have been writing songs probably for about 20 years, um, ever since I was uh, in the choir at school and performed duets for my school. Um, but it's only now that, since sort of since COVID, um, I learned to play the guitar um, and decided really that that's what I wanted to be. So, I wrote lots of songs and I'm releasing a song every month in 2024. So, what was it like going to the um, recording studio for the first time? It was scary because I had um, really bad stage fright at the time. So I went into the studio about a year ago, um, but I was lucky because my producer is Lewis Fowler from Two Ways Home, and he was a friend of mine, and he re has a recording studio at the back of his um, apartment. So it didn't have the glass screen in front of it. It didn't have like the booth. It was really sort of more informal. So it was actually amazing. Literally within five minutes, he had me picking up the guitar, playing my chords, and I suddenly felt my shoulders drop and relax. And like he is an amazing producer in terms of getting getting you comfortable and getting more out of you, getting you out of your comfort zone a little bit. So it's actually been amazing. It's my favorite thing to do. We go in there, we have a giggle, and then we start recording. And then we go for lunch at this amazing Italian place <laughs> before the afternoon session. So, no, he's been incredible. I mean, he produces so many different artists in his studio. So I've been really lucky. So, uh, Kim, well, tell me more about your debut single called um, It's Gonna Be a Long Night. Sure. So I was nine when that song came out in the 80s. <gasps> Showing my age. Um and I just lost my grandma at the time. And this song came on the radio and it was from the Kids From Fame soundtrack. Um, and I remember it just hit me in the heart. And I remember thinking, when I'm a grown up, I'm going to record that song. And I did. And um, so I knew that had to be my first single. And um, the chap that wrote it, Gary Portnoy, he wrote a couple of songs for the Kids From Fame and also the sitcom Cheers. He wrote the theme tune. And so I thought, I'm going to write to him. I'm going to tell him that I'm releasing a cover of his song and see if he res responds to it. And I was so excited because he did respond. And he said, I loved your version. And that just made my entire year. Because I thought, you know, as a courtesy, you're, you're releasing somebody else's song. I'm going to write to him. So it was just such a privilege and an honour. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of a soppy song. Gets people crying. <laughs> But I love it. It's beautiful. So can you tell me more about um, Take Care of You? Yeah. So I wrote Take Care of You following a, a breakup. But it was not the usual sort of breakup. It was like, you know, when two people are in a relationship, been there a long time and it's sort of just not working anymore. And you really like the person, you care about them, but you just know something's not sort of quite right, not sitting right with you. And you break up and... Um, it, you sort of get to that point where you wish each other the best and that's what it was about it's like take care of you no hard feelings i want you to be happy and that's why i wrote take care of you just about that breakup sort of it was quite a personal song it's from the heart that one <laughs> so can you tell me more about uh life with the living room yes so um i bought tickets um, for myself and my girlfriend to go and be in the audience at that. And the same day, Linda Conway's round had someone drop out um, due to illness. So she she texted me and said, are you around on this date and do you want to perform? And I jumped at it. So the Bedford was on my in my um, vision board as a place I wanted to, to sing. So I jumped at the opportunity and it's, it was a live in the living room gives back to meningitis with James Vince. So it's an amazing cause. And I thought I have to be a part of that. And um, I got to meet so many amazing artists and it was my actual first gig ever. <laughs> so I was terrified getting on stage and I just heard all these amazing artists before me. And you have a bit of that sort of 
moment where you think, what am I doing here? These guys are so amazing. How am I going to match that? But after my first couple of bars, I, I relaxed into the performance and I absolutely loved it. I felt so at home up there and wanted to do it again and again and again. So uh, can you tell me what about uh, the open mics you do? So um, I've only done one open mic and that was in December. Um, I got home to Pembrokeshire for Christmas with my mum and a friend of ours is a saxophone player and he was going to an open mic night and he said, you should really come along. And it was at a beautiful art gallery. It was very intimate. There was about 50 people. It was packed and you could hear a pin drop, the same as the Bedford evening. It was just people really getting properly engrossed into your singles. And um, it was just a great opportunity to meet other artists that were out there and share the stage with them and and get your own music out there. So I sang three songs. Um, yeah, it was so amazing. It was just a beautiful evening. And then I got to speak to all the artists afterwards. So can you tell me more about your latest single called I See You Soon Then? I'll See You Soon Then came around about four years ago. I was sitting in this room with this picture behind me. Um, and it was a rainy day in London. And I remember thinking, oh, I miss Australia, the beaches, the sand, all my friends that I still have over there. You know, you guaranteed sunshine nine months of the year. And I decided to write a song about it. Um, and so I'll see you soon then is just kind of an ode to my life in Australia and everything that I miss about that life that I had and all the memories and the people that are still there. So it's about missing summer sunshine. And it's also a more upbeat song because the first two were quite sort of slow ballad style. And this one's an up-tempo, like, you know, you want to play it in your car and sing at the top of your lungs. So can you tell me, are you uh, going to release any more singles this year? I am. And in fact, the single coming out in February is called um, The One Who Deserves Me. And every time I play that, I played that at the open mic and at the Bedford, um, I come off stage and all the women are in tears. There's, there's just tissues being handed around. And um, the actual recording of this um, was Lewis and I in the studio, and he decided to put a double-sided mic and record two guitars at the same time. So we both play and record at the same time, which gives it sort of a live feel. And Lewis started singing the harmonies with me, and I almost fell off my chair because they were so beautiful. And I said, please, 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 will you record a duet with me on this single? And he agreed. And... So when it comes out in February, Lewis from Two Ways Home is singing the the duet with me. And actually, it's my favourite song that I'm going to record. It really hits my heart quite quite hard. And I think it has that reaction of everybody else. Like, that's why so many women are crying, because the words really hit home. Um, so that's my favourite song that's coming out. And then I'm going to release a song every month in 2024. So have any future plans for doing any more gigs? Absolutely. I'm going to uh, try and book in a launch party at the Bedford at some time in the second half of the year uh, where I want to sing with friends. Um, so I'm going to have other artists join me. Um, and I'm going to do a launch party in Pembrokeshire as well um, for all the, the Welsh people that have supported me, all my locals and friends there. And then I'm going to do a lot of open mics as well. I'm literally going to take my guitar on my backpack and I'm going to hit every open mic I can get to this year just to, you know, for comfort, for experience. And I just want to do as many gigs and open mics as I can this year. So um, what inspires you to write music? Ah, funny you should ask that. So take care of you. Do you remember the movie Pretty Woman? Where she's saying at the end, take care of you, take care of you. That's where that line came from. And I'm about to hit the studio again with Lewis because I wrote another song called I've Got to Get Back to Me. And that line came from Sex and the City and Just Like That. So I get inspiration from movies that I watch, shows. I'll be sitting on the tube and I'll hear a line that I think is really cool and I can build a song around. And so I've got to get back to me was when Charlotte York is saying, oh, you know, I've become a mother, a wife. I've given up my job. I've forgotten who I am. 
I've got to get back to me. And I remember thinking I was just turning 50 last year and I felt the same way. I was like, am I in the right job? Am I where I thought I'd be at 50? And I wrote this this line, I've got to get back to me. And I built the whole song around it. And I'm going to re be recording that next week. So that's kind of how I songwrite. It sort of hits me in the shower or if I'm on the tube. If so, I listen to people everywhere. Huge into lyrics. So uh, how's being an independent artist for you? It's tough. I mean, because with streaming and digital downloads, you don't get paid anything. So even if your songs hit the charts, you're not getting paid. Um, so it's a tough environment, especially when you have to do all your social media posts yourself and all your marketing yourself. It's, it's a lot. When the music recording stops, there's a lot of admin to do as well. You know, because you're trying to get your songs all, all over the social media platforms, uh, trying to build a fan base and a following. So it's it's a pretty tough industry. And I think especially for, for women as well, we're not hugely represented, which is why, um, you know, it's great to have people like yourself and, you know, Linda Conway as well from Voice of a, a Voice of a Woman. Like It's great to have you guys sort of promoting smaller independent artists and getting the word out there. So finally, can you tell my listeners, where can I find you on your social media? So I'm on Spotify under Sammy Saravia. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, all the platforms, Amazon Music. I'm literally everywhere. <laughs> um, so I'd thank love you. to have people following me. Uh, thank you for me uh, chat to you today. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too, Ruben. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye.